months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. Okay. These are such great stories. Who's today? Today we're going to talk about Virginia Baptista Faria. Around 1900, Virginia's father, at the ripe old age of 24, came to Ventura County from the Azor Islands near Portugal. That's a long way to go. And he landed in Boston where he got a job in a brickyard. He finally moved to Oxnard, California and went to work for the Patterson Ranch Company and they grew lima beans. Then in 1908, he managed to buy a small ranch in the Rincon area. Everybody knows it by the name of the Faria Beach area. That's right by the beach presently called Mondo's. And they call it Mondo's Beach just because there used to be a restaurant there many years ago called Mondo's. It's a famous surf spot. And right up on the bluff there in the hill, that's where the Faria Ranch used to be. And they grew lima beans and other dry farming crops. Because lima beans used to be a big part of the agriculture here. Lima right? beans was the biggest agriculture next to walnuts, uh, the 30s and the 40s. It was uh, dry farming, whereas you just plant in springtime after the rains and they don't irrigate it and it just grows all by itself. Are you a surfer? Yes. Have you surfed there? Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite place to surf on the coast? Right now I go to the, what they call the surfer's point and I, I have a favorite place where I park all the time and it's so cool because you just hop out of your car, get on your surfboard, paddle out, you paddle up to the river mouth and then and the, the currents wash you down so I get caught in the, in the current and I wait and see my truck and I hop out of the water and walk up to my truck. I'm the laziest surfer that I know of. <laughs> Great, let's see this story about the Faria story. Good evening. We're going to talk about old times in Ventura at the Freya Beach. We have Virginia Freya Baptiste with us tonight, and she has a couple of interesting stories. So stay with us, and we'll be right back. We're back, and I'd like you to meet Virginia Freya Baptiste. How are you? Well, I'm just fine, great. Bill. Just really great. It's great to have you with us. Well, it was it's the same with me. I just enjoy, I'm enjoying this. I guess I've known you about 35, 40 years. Well, you lived in the Sadiko area and I lived up on the Rincon, but yeah, I heard about you. We, we trade names here. We, that's we, right. We've known all the same people, haven't we? That's right. Yeah. That's well, it's right. great. See, you know, your, your father was born about 100 and 110 years ago, something like that, on, in the Azor Islands. Yes. Now, how in the world did he find his way to Ventura County? Well, he left uh, at the age of 24. Yeah. He left uh, Fayal, and he left his mother, father, family, and his native country. And he came to Boston, Massachusetts on a ship. And uh, he was met by his aunt and uncle, who lived in Taunton, Massachusetts, which is not very far from Boston. And he lived there for a long time. And then he went and looking for a job in which he was very fortunate in getting a job in the brickyards. Yeah. So he saved every penny of his money. Of course, he paid his keep yeah. with the aunt and uncle. And, then he, and the money saved from this job. Then he traveled to Oxnard, California, where there was a large settlement of Portuguese people. That's how he heard about it, isn't That's that? exactly right. He yeah. knew. Uh, a, there was a lot of Portuguese people. Yeah. There, this is a close 
knit group, isn't it? Oh, indeed. It's yeah. uh, just like they're up in San Joaquin Valley. Yeah. They're all the Portuguese people who have come from the Azores Islands and other, uh, from Portugal itself. They've all gathered yeah. in the San Joaquin Valley. Okay, we're back to Oxnard. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Where did he settle? <clears throat> well, he settled there in, in Oxnard, uh -huh. and he went to work. He got a job at the Pedersen Ranch, and um, uh, which was a large lima, green, uh, lima bean growers that had this ranch there, and uh, the uh, Pedersen Ranch. And he worked for a Mr. Bo Bert Colbert. Bert Colbert. And yeah. he is from he was from Somas, and he was a really a faithful um, man and a faithful person to my father. Oh. He, he took him under his wing. We we have a picture of the old Patterson Ranch, and it shows the Teamsters. And your father might very well be in this, but I have no idea. Well, it could be. It could be. But they're they're hitching up their teams to go out yes. and work. Work the fields. That's right. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, those fellows were paid very well in those days. Oh, indeed, they were. Probably got a dollar a day. Didn't well, they? that's a lot. Was a lot of money in those <laughs> days. <laughs> sure was. Okay. Well, now he's worked for the Patterson Ranch, but how did uh, how did he move around and, and settle on the Rincon? How, what caused that? Well, uh, one day, Mr. Bert Colbert uh, loaned him a horse to go horseback riding up the coastline. Yeah. Uh, if you have been to the Azor Islands, it's just about the same. It is there, it is here, and uh, so it's all the ocean. So he was really particularly interested in being by the sea. He wanted to be by the sea, and the islands are about the same distance, this right? This is true, yeah. and as he appeared up on the coastline, uh, he noticed, uh, he looked over to his left as he was riding up the beach, uh, and uh, he said, my goodness, am I dreaming or what? There's Anna Capo, and there is Santa Cruz. And that's just like the Azores and the Pico Islands off of Fayal. Yeah. And uh, so then he eyed, went on a little further, and he saw this ranch. And he was very interested. And he said, one of these days, I'm going to, um, to uh, um, purchase this Buy ranch. This ranch. Well, now, the country looked like this about the time he bought that. This is the old, one yeah, of the no, old Rincon Road. No, no doubt that is correct. Mm -hmm. So no freeway? No freeway, no. The only thing that was there was the railroad, and yeah. that was put in in 1875. Well, I, I think it was a little after that. But was it's, it? Yeah, I think oh. they're going to celebrate 100 years. Oh. But that's, uh, that's about the way they looked. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, now he's got his dream, and he's going home to the Patterson Ranch, and he's going to make a lot of money there. Well, you know, and save. saving that all, all he can save in order to buy this. So contacts were made uh, to with the Dunchy family, mm -hmm. and uh, that he was very interested in purchasing this property. So finally, after uh, many uh, contacts, finally in 1908, uh, part of the ranch was purchased, and this section also included the beach area. Yeah, down to the waters there. That's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, a few years later, then the balance of the property owned by the Dunch, Dunch family mm -hmm. was purchased. Now, we have a picture of your father and your mother. That's correct. Now, I think the picture of Dad there was a little later, about 1920 or something. Well, it was, because he was making plans to go back to see his mother and his father and yeah. his family. And this is his passport, passport picture, which he went up to San Francisco. And he was, and after talking to them, uh, to the people in San Francisco, he um, then thought uh, that he wasn't sure whether he could come back, if he went there, if he could return. Yeah. So he loved this country so very, very oh, much. Yes, he did. And your mother, handsome lady, and a hard worker. Oh, indeed. And they were married? They were married in 1910, in December of 1910, mm -hmm. in the church, St. Sebastian Church in Santa Paula. Now, how did they happen to meet? Well, uh, 
they met, you know, the Portuguese people were very good about making, having gatherings. They and liked picnics. the party is the way yeah, they say picnics it. picnics <laughs> and certain festivities and meeting new people and visiting with old friends in the Oxnard and Sadikoi area. Yeah. And at one of these gatherings, my father and mother were introduced in the year 1909. By December 1910, they were, as I said, mentioned before, they were married in the St. Sebastian Church in Santa Paula. And then after their marriage, my father took his bride to the Rincon area and lived in the ran ranch home for many, many years. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, this is dry land. You, Absolutely. You know what we're talking about. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and that's, that's correct. A tough place to farm. Yeah. There's no, no irrigation. That's right. We yeah. had to wait by the fog. When the fog came, it was good for the beans. Yeah. Now, here's a, here's a good picture oh, yes. of your dad. That's correct. And I think you're in the very far yes. right-hand corner. Yes. I, you barely can see me. I think there is a little side view there. And he's got a three, I almost said three-horse team, no, but, but that, that one's a mule there. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he, he's working those hills. Or he's, uh, it looked like he's plowing or subsoiling one of the yeah. two. Yeah. Uh, getting, this was in the fall of the year and getting and ready for the. Yeah. Re and he's going to plant? Well, he was going to, no, we'll see in well, the fall. What, what did he plant though? Well, always, he only raised lima, lima beans. beans. Yeah. Only li a large lima beans. Large lima And he was very good at it and was very successful. Yeah. Uh, he became very successful in that he because sure when he purchased the property, there was a lot of apricot trees and w olive trees, yeah. and he knew nothing about the um, uh, the trees, fruit trees at all. So then he went to an auction sale over in Oxnard, and there he met his good friend again, Mr. Bert Colbert, yeah. and Mr. Bert Colbert uh, helped him uh, buy a t set of uh, horses. Now, when I visited you the other day, we went out in the in the old yard there, and here was this old stationary thrasher. That's right. That's a, a that's a that's about a third as large as the ones they do use these days. Oh yes, oh yes. Of course, you know we just had small acreage. You see? Yeah, yeah. And but that's a stationary one. That doesn't move. That doesn't move. That's right. That was powered with an old engine. Not, did you have a steam engine or? No, we just had a tractor. An old tractor. An old tractor. With an old yes. belt was, drive yeah. on it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the boys would help thrash? Oh, yes. The boys, of course, you know, were not interested in farming at that time. Huh. They were interested in the oil fields. So my father got them a job, each of the jobs <laughs> at the oil fields. They both of my brothers, they wanted their hours. <laughs> so they wanted from from seven thirty till four thirty. Yeah. And we're from sunrise to sunset. Yeah. And when you know when you're in the farming business. And Bush when you're trying to produce your crops, you do have to be on the move to get the work done. And also there were dry years. Oh, well and, yes, with dry and, years you uh, lost you almost lost your shirt tail. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. All right. Uh, how about the woman's life on a farm such as this? Now, remember, this is five miles. Maybe I should no. tell, our, tell our audience here. We're five miles from Ventura, and you did not have water piped in. You did not have electricity, and your road was a dirt road. Correct. Right. That's all correct, oh, yes. No, but you did have a, have a beautiful chandelier. Can you tell us about oh, the chandelier? Yes. I just think that is so beautiful. Uh, this, my father and mother went on a honeymoon to Los Angeles. And of course, they didn't have any, my father, when he lived in this house, did not have, she just had some old lamps. Kerosene lamps. All kerosene lamps, that's all they were in those days. and. Um, they went to a second-hand store, and they purchased this uh, colo lamp. It's one of those that you pull up and down. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, later years, and I think in 1930, my father made it stationary then, mm -hmm. uh, th because electricity was installed at that time in 1930. So we didn't have to pull it up and down. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, they can do that. In those days, they couldn't, you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So well kept. Oh, yes. Well, we're very proud of that. Now, how you, you, you must have gone to school some way. How did you go to school? How did I go to school? Well, 
sometimes my mother would take us to a school here in Ventura, the old Plaza School, yeah. uh, by horse uh, buggy, at, uh, and uh, or my father would bring us in the wagon, or sometimes there was an old Pickwick stage that came by, and so the um, the three of us, my two brothers and myself, um, rode this Pickwick and into the station down in Ventura, and then we walked from there to the Plaza School. Now that Pickwick used to run on the Coast Highway. Yes, it did. And I think we have a picture of one that ran from San Diego to Portland, Oregon, if I remember oh, yes. correctly. There it is. Yes, it, yes. Isn't they that sure? a dandy? Oh, it's a dandy, and it's, that looks familiar. I'm telling you, we, the three of us used to ride in that Pickwick for 25 cents. All the way to school. All the way to Ventura. <laughs> and uh, we, we, as I said, left off at the station, then we walked to the school. That's neat. We're going to stop now and take a little break. Good. Okay? Thank You've you. You've done very well. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. And we're back, and we're visiting with Virginia Freer Baptiste. And we left our story when we were talking about getting water out in the Rincon. What year did that arrive, Virginia? Well, of course, uh, if you're speaking about the, uh, the Casitas Municipal Water District, that was in 1960. Yeah. But prior to that, we always gave thanks for winter rains. You, you, uh, yeah. And we did have some wells, and that tested sulfur or alkali, so you can see that that was not any good. But we did have an underground cistern. Cistern? A yeah. cistern, mm -hmm. and which we had the water to do the cooking with. Yeah. And um, so uh, that would be, was collecting the water for the spring and for the summer. Fresh water was such a complicated uh, problem. And of course, that fresh water was not available to the area, in the Rincon area, until in 1960. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, uh, the Casitas Municipal Water District, uh, we're very grateful to them because if it wasn't for them, I guess to this day, we probably wouldn't have any Hauling water. water would you? And we'd still have to be hauling this water. <laughs> so we certainly thank them very, very much for that. Well, now, you didn't get telephones either until about... Oh, the telephone came in there about in 1930. Well, now, how did you... You know, when you work on a farm, there are emergencies. Well, of course, um, uh, my father always said, uh, you take care of your own, you know, we just... Yeah. Of course, uh, if we needed any emergencies, we could always go down to Dula, which is, uh, Dula was owned by the Ventura Railroad Company, mm -hmm. and that's directly across the road from Salomar Beach. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was a big, there was a pretty good sized settlement of people who lived in the boxcars there, for mm -hmm. that houses on tracks, and uh, so they cared for the tracks and so on and so forth. They, in turn, the caretaker then would called the Ventura office and said a doctor was needed and uh, uh, for them to, then a doctor was gotten and or they came out. Well, now your brother Joe had quite an experience. Oh, yes. His first one. Well, his first experience was that um, uh, he was born, of course, at the ranch home because in the month of February, uh, the, the heavy rains, there was such a terrible rains and much flooding, and the Ventura Bridge was washed away. And that was the time when Ventura was flooded down at the west end of town. And um, so all of that, uh, the bridge washed out to sea. Well, uh, so, who was the doctor? Did he get there? Dr. Homer. Oh, yeah. Well, Dr. Homer, my father went to meet him at the bridge site with this horse and buggy and uh, he came over on a cable across the river and all this water was underneath and the electric uh, electricity well the I guess it was the electrician people uh, the electric people put him on a box car and he went across the river my father met him at the other end and he took him up to the ranch house and then took care of my mother remarkable yes story. yes remarkable yes story. well now there were, um, somewhere along this time, the beach cabins began to appear up there. Yes, it, uh, it, they started appearing in the year 1917. Mm -hmm. There was one family from Santa Paula, and I will 
we'll say their names was Teague, the Teague family. One of the girls uh, had asthma very badly, mm -hmm. and the doctor said the only thing that's going to cure is that good ocean water. You must go and l live by the beach for a while and take in the air of the, be of the ocean and bathe in the ocean. And uh, sure enough, uh, it really did help her uh, after a year. Well, that started a trend because the picture on our screen now shows some of those early cabins. Oh, yes, yes. And there's a family out there. I couldn't tell you who they were. I believe they're all from Santa Paula. Well, they're all, right? see, only people that was not lived, that had cabins here on the beach at that time were just people from Santa Paula, Fillmore, Piru. Yeah. To, uh, get, to get out of hot weather. To get, and they only came up here for the summer. That was yeah. their summer. Yeah. Uh, Yes, yeah, so that, that was the Harding family, the yeah. Hardison family. That's all changed now. Oh, yes. Beautiful is. homes. We're going to talk about yes. those okay. in a little bit. Fine. Well, now, uh, you know, your folks being very grateful for and thankful that they lived in Ventura County in the USA. Oh, yes. They gave an area of, grand out, of land out there. Can you tell, a little, tell yes. us a little bit about well, that? Well, I can tell you that in 1917, my father gave to the Ventura County four acres of beachfront land uh, at Peaches Point to be used as campsites for those wishing to spend time at the beach. It is known as the Freya Park. Uh, the Ventura County has owned this, this property for 70 years. Now, we have a picture of your father standing by the old cellar door. Well, that was the old home when we moved into town. My father, in fact, it was such a hassle going to school yeah. that that's how come he brought, bought this house on Thompson Boulevard. And we lived there during school time, uh, yeah. school, school with years. the five days. And then on Friday and Saturday, Zoom, we went back to the ranch. You're very grateful. <laughs> and that's your mom. And oh. that's my mother at the ranch house. All right dressed there. up, ready for mass. Well, we were going to go, that was an Easter Sunday. We were going to go, mm -hmm. I think, or either Mother's Day. And we were going to go to church, yeah. yes, at the old mission. Now I belong to the old mission parish. Well, Virginia, I'd like to put a little note in here. You've kind of kept up with your family's tradition in that there now is a free of foundation. And uh, you don't have to say this, I'll say it, but you do help needy organizations in this community, and yes. we're all very grateful for that. Uh, the the, uh, the Faria Family Foundation is run by the younger ones. That's Joe's <laughs> daughter and Frank's <laughs> daughter and my two children. They run yeah. that. And yeah, uh, they have, they, it's all set up uh, in a business way. Jeannie Faria is uh, the president, and uh, they give a lot of things for children. And uh, so we have set up this foundation in 1982. Uh, we start, uh, after uh, we sold the property, yeah. then we start fixing this foundation. That's and the great. kids are doing a great job. That's great. Yes. That's great. Okay. Well, the next big change up on the Rincon was the freeway. Oh, yes. Uh, the freeway, um, of course, uh, they started approaching us for a freeway in 1960. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, they took, uh, all together, it was 51 acres of land that was put in for the freeway. Here's an aerial view. Yes. Looking right down on the house, which is almost dead center there. That's true. The ranch house is above yeah. that proposed, or that new freeway. Yeah. And then, of course, all those beach houses that are on the uh, ocean front, yeah. and uh, also you can see the Faria Park, which the county yeah. has. Mm -hmm. And the and the houses have all changed from this picture. They're all now multi. Oh yes. Well, you see, we sold the property, thousands. as I said, in December the eighth, nineteen eighty-one. Mm -hmm. That's the day we signed the papers, and we felt the time had come because. My two brothers and myself were, you know, getting up in years. Let's face it. That's right. <laughs> we all have to do it someday or other. And uh, so uh, that's w our decision with our attorney. Uh, we decided that that was the thing to do. But we did everything. We, we formed a homeowners association, and we did everything through the homeowners association because we wanted all those people who had places at the beach 
to own their own home, yeah. to be able to buy it from the trust. Then there was a trust set up, and they bought the home from the trust, and that's the way the thing is run. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Let's reminisce. We've got a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. You know, one of the uh, really unbelievable things to hit Ventura happened in the late 40s, and that was a snowstorm. Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. I remember that we were taking our children to school. They both went to a parochial school, the Holy Cross School, and uh, so we was uh, got up one morning and said, my Lord, it's the snow around here. And of course, the kids were just eager about it. In fact, I think every kid in Ventura, I guess, didn't even want to go to school because yep. they want to go out there. Should have been and a holiday. Make, uh, snowmans and have a lot of, sn and make snowballs and have a lot of fun. We but, have a picture. I think this one's taken on the Oxnard Plain. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen too many pictures of this. Well, but uh, there were two, three inches of snow, and it stayed. And it stayed. It yeah. was even down to the ocean tide. The, even the ocean waves was bringing in the snow oh. to, up to the beach. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a, now, Santa Barbara earthquake. That's another one. Oh, yes. I was at a Girl Scout camp at that time up in Matilhall Canyon. I joined the Girl Scouts when I was um, 12 years old, and because uh, I just... Just, I spent for almost 40 years with the Girl Scout movement. I really enjoyed it. But this talk, speaking about the earthquake, uh, we were camped up Upper Matillo Canyon, and, um, and all those rocks start coming down. We said, well, what in the world has happened? You know, in those days, they didn't have good communications. No. No. But anyway, we all, all the camp, the, uh, the one in charge, the, uh, the, uh, the director in, in charge of the camp, told us all to go down in the middle of the river. So we all went down in the middle of the river, and we stayed there. Of course, it wasn't a swift river or anything yeah, like that. It's a little creek. But it was a creek, like, and we all stayed there until it was time, until they gave us a signal to go back to our places. Because those rocks, over, you know, and those hills were quite way up in the sky, and they came down rolling, and, and but no one was hurt. Okay. Uh, we have about 20 seconds. Okay. How about your favorite teacher? Oh, that the was in the, in the, public, in the uh, Plaza School, and her name was Miss Hovey. Um, I just thought she was an ideal person. I just enjoyed her so very much. She took each in child as, as if it was her own child, yeah. and she was just like a mother to all of us. That's great. And that, if those school days were really great. Is Plaza School was an ideal school. I enjoyed it. We also, then I went to the seventh and eighth grade at the uh, uh, Lincoln School. Yeah. And Virginia has been great. Well, it's been Can great. Can you believe too. we've been at this for a half hour? <laughs> well, I can't believe it because <laughs> I was really, I didn't know whether I was going to do it or not. You did but fine. here I am. <laughs> Thank we've, you very much. We've been visiting with Virginia Maria Baptiste. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>